Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Here's our special guest today, Roberto Ruarte. Isn't that nice? He put together a nice little promo piece, talked about our community. Says something to me about someone who would take the time to do this, so I'm really looking forward to his interview. Hi, Craig. Good day to you, Arif, Kevin, yes sir, Vin, hello, Windsor 99. So what a great week of edifying interviews. We started off the week with At Faith Might, Lydia Mightem Finkley giving her views on everything cable, followed up by At 50 Pips, which was a nice discussion about getting real about the trading gig. Then yesterday, Bryn Kelly, uh, I learned some things about fundamentals in the energy complex, hope you did too. And today we're gonna be able to speak to Roberto. Looking forward to that in about an hour. Hello, Hassan, how are you? So first of all, I'd like to uh, acknowledge Blake. What a great call, he bought and picked the dollar, didn't he? Nice call, Blake. He was short. You're on. I'm sure he's uh, changed positions quite a few times. Big break here. Uh, Blake also tweeted something to me. He usually doesn't, but he was talking about the divergence in Euro Aussie today. Uh, as far as Euro Pound is, uh, it, I'm out. I'm not sure what to do with it now. Took out this high. So it was good for this, and then with good money management, you should have partial profits and maybe BE or minus 10 or 20 pips with stops over this side. Looks like Steve's potential count was right, and you know, we never got to Nick's objectives of 90 and a half. Also, looking at what's happening at uh, Forex Analytics. The patterns in play. Let me just go back to the TL page. Everyone should be riding the crude up, even though we're getting closer to the end of it. Just want to take you down to some of the patterns in play. Subscribers are already hip to all of this. But uh, long silver is working. Long crude with a 49 target. That's both Nick and Grega had that. Uh, Blake is seeing something negative in DAX compared to the S&P. The DAX looks pretty crummy. Rolling over well before the Dow. So a nice look by Blake if you trade the Borses in Germany. The N cross is still very negative on Euro Yen. This could be a great opportunity on this rally that we've just had. So we almost got to the 130. Okay, let's see, the, the guppy. Guppy is still the weakness because of pound weakness. I'd be a little careful here with the guppy now. What do you have? One, two, three, and I'm doing this on the fly. But I don't know if I'd be short the guppy anymore. This is looks like a pretty classic textbook three driver. I'm not saying that you have to buy the three driver, but I don't think I'd be short anymore. I bet Steve Volge has covered his shorts from up here. Steve's really been on fire. But I think the Euro Yen is a decent shot up here for this to be the failing rally. Uh, I'm not sure what the news was that came out, but it must have been Yen positive. So a lot of people looking at the Yen uh, have been reached major support. No, let's just be the euro coming off. Must be a euro bid. So, not sure what the news was. Yeah, it's a euro bid. ECB. Good what was it? Steve? What was it? It's the ECB and Draghi's. Uh, oh, 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 okay, yeah, that's a good Draghi, reason. Draghi, uh, Draghi today lost a very big battle, which, to be honest, it was it was a losing battle. He, yeah, oh, yeah. he tried to, he tried to you know he tried to push all the dovish comments, and the market just doesn't give. 
Right. It <laughs> waited for him. Well, yeah. so far it is a failing rally. Uh, uh, but yeah, I would say that the market's definitely. You, you remember if, if he's trying to talk ago. it down, if he's trying to talk it down, it's going to take more than talk. Yeah. He completely yeah. he completely tries to talk it down, and they're also trying to persuade the market that they might even increase QE, etc. But I think that there is no 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 um, market participant. If you remember, we had this this discussion two months ago, that I said that I believe that the euro uh, all over the board is more or less a good buy because um, you know things are changing in the eurozone and a lot of negativity was already priced in. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I think the market now more or less has realized that one way or another, uh, slower or quicker, the ECB will have to follow in uh, some tightening. One way or another, it, it, they will begin obviously by reducing uh, quantitative easing. At some point, they will start increasing rates. They say that they're very far away from that, but the market doesn't seem to believe them. Personally, I don't believe them as well. I mean, if we don't go into a global recession anytime soon, they will also st uh, have to start um, uh, being more hawkish. And the reason is very simple, because the boss in the, in the Eurozone is Germany, and Germany is absolutely fine with that. As simple well, as why, that. Don't, why don't we just change the name back to the Deutschmark? Because it's an accumulation of countries, and indeed it is. Uh, but on the other hand, you you have somebody that is the boss and i know that there is you know i'm a greek especially in greece there is a lot of negativity about the germans personally i like them very much and i really wish you know greeks greeks had uh, some of the characteristics that uh, you know the german population have as well i mean obviously you know it's um it's uh, one has you know their own pros and cons and you know usually <laughs> usually you know a mix is is ideal but i can tell you one thing for sure if you own a business or if 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 you if you are in a business uh, like a stockholder let's say and you have let's say 50% of the business 55% of the business isn't it normal that more or less you have a bigger saying than others do so i don't understand why there is so negative yeah so i don't understand why there is so much negativity about them you know having a general control of the eurozone they are the biggest force of the eurozone there is no question about that they have the they have the strongest economy in the eurozone. There's no question about that. Um, they, they have been. Well, yeah, you know, you're more of a. Yeah, you have more of a. Um, you know, embraced uh, the globalist view. You know, nationalism and ethnicity and all of that dies hard. Yes, you know of course I mean? they do, and and I don't believe that we should. Uh, you know, we should eradicate the. Uh, the idea of nationalism in the good sense, because I know that yeah. the word nationalism uh, has, you know, negative connotation in in many right. aspects. But you know, there is a positive connotation of that. I mean, um, for, I, th for, I think uh, it's 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 great if you feel proud of your country. Of course, there's ab there's yeah. absolutely no question about it. But that doesn't mean that at the same time you have to uh, you don't have to belong in a in a larger community, right? Yeah. No, I mean, I mean bet that. you, I bet you, and I'm not an American, that the average Texan might have way more differences with the average New Yorker than the average person from Belgium has with the average German. And you still belong in the same nation, correct? It's a great metaphor. You're yeah. definitely not American. I, I, I'm, I can tell by your voice. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah. Really? I, 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 you know I what? Until, until you said that, Blake, I thought Steve was from Texas. I see him with a 10-gallon hat. Nah, he sounds right. like he's right. from San Francisco. <laughs> at, at, at least a couple of revolvers. <laughs> I know you're uh, saying there. Stuff that so, I built, right? So, buddy, what do you think? Euro uh, still hasn't poked yeah. in your eyes. Is that ne inevitable, or could this well, be an opportunity to fade what the market views as, mm, you know, not a lot of uh, virulence from Draghi that you know they're well, they're trading in his face. Well, let's well first of all let's let's take a look and 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 sorry I was here a little earlier I got disconnected I'm not too sure why I had to reconnect so Steve I'll 
I'll take over for a few minutes, um, you know, before Absolutely. before they open. Um, so, yeah, first of all, Draghi is doing and saying everything in his power to not distort the markets. And, but you can tell by the action in the euro dollar, it doesn't believe him. And, and Steve was just mentioning that too, as I got knocked off. Um, I mean, he says uh, he he says everything from let me let me grab some of his work. Draghi says tapering scenarios are not being discussed. Okay, yeah. so he says, uh, well, here, let me let me let me pull it, pull it up right here. Taping scenarios are not being discussed. Um, factors holding back inflation are temporary, but real, will remain for some time. Uh, council unanimous and not setting date of QE change. Um, I mean, he just he's he, downside risk predominantly due to global factors. I mean, he just he's he's trying to say everything to keep the market calm. But you can see that the euro dollar. I mean, it, typically when you when you try to be that dovish, yeah, the 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 currency is going to go down. But as you can see, the euro has gone straight up since he's been talking. I mean, he's trying to tape. He's trying to tamper down right. so the euro doesn't bust out. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. I, I, I mean, I picked up some Euro Canadian and I scalped in and out of it um, uh, a little earlier. I, I bought it. I bought it down here, sold it up here, actually at 62. So right where my cursor's at, I didn't capture everything. I played a little of the Euro to the upside because because the way I have to look at it and the way we have to look at it is, you know, he doesn't want the euro at 117 or 118 but the market knows that you know it, when he gets into next the next meeting he's going to have to be they're calling his bluff they you know he's going to have to be more hawkish and 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 you know especially going into uh um um uh the which we call it um, Jackson Hole Symposium. He's going to. Uh, there used to be a class of traders called bond vigilantes, and yes. it now seems like we have a group of either euro or dollar vigilantes that, you know, all the time uh, the bond vigilantes would just brush off whatever the Fed said and take the market to wherever they wanted to take it. Now it's happening in euro. And I think that's gonna that's gonna continue to happen, and because the euro, I mean, again, let's face the facts here. The Fed probably won't be raising. If they do, it's very nominal, um, and the rest of the central banks are gonna have to play a little catch up. So uh, it's it, it's 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 a situation where you're going to get. Um, this divergence between monetary policy it's it's opposite of what we saw two years ago you know and everybody was like blake why are you so bullish the dollar i'm like the the fed's the only central bank in town that's raising rates no one else is now it is the opposite we've we're done you know or at least close to being done but other central banks are just getting started so with that being said you're you're, you're going to you're you're going to see that 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 divergence between monetary policy pick up again, which is dollar weakness, and so I, and now I'm the, the question you know you may ask to me right now is you know do I buy the euro right now at, at this stage you know as you were saying do, do we hit new highs I think we eventually hit new highs I just don't know if I want to buy it at this very moment in time, just because I don't want to buy it doesn't else also mean I want to short it because that's the next question that I always get from traders is well if you're not going to buy it are you going to short it. I think that was a gift in Euro Yen, Blake. What do you think? Well, it, it might have been down I, about forty it, pips from there. And, you know, I want to actually let me let me stop for a moment and uh, and and talk about a couple of things re regarding the Euro Yen. If you use um, Forex Analytics, uh, the I, I actually closed a pattern in play on the Euro Yen right at break even. When is that? One twenty nine twenty five or something. And I use Forex right. Analytics, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad you do. <laughs> I'm glad you do. I, 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 in what fact, you know, it's a, it's a, my, uh, it's the best service I've ever seen uh, in my 30 years in the business. Wow, that's a that's a big statement. Thank you very much. Well, okay. I, 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 that's really that's awesome. Um, I, I just want to show you that I, I closed that specifically because I knew that we were going to have some volatility now uh, because of the ECB. Do I still think that this pattern 
could still play out? Yes, I do. Um, could I reinitiate it? I might. I mean, I just, all I know is when you, when it hasn't played, I, I really expected by now, I, I expected us to be down here ahead of the ECB. I expected us to be down here because we hadn't gotten down there. I, I didn't want and feel that I needed the exposure, um, you know, with an event like this. And you, you, you can, you can see just intraday. I mean, we when you know, this happened like right around here, but we went down and up and, you know, is this a gift up here to be short? I, you know, Dale, I think it is. I'm not short though. Um, you know, but I, but looking at like, you know, maybe a, like a longer term pattern. I mean, you know, this still is a, you know, head and shoulder trying to develop, I, I you know, however you want to draw it. Um, but that's not the, that's not the point of the, 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 the conversation. There's something that I want to talk to you guys and gals as users and as listeners of, of, uh, of this webinar. First of all, as users of Forex, uh, analytics, and then as listeners to, um, to the to the face webinar, we are uh, uh, two two announcements. First one is July thirty first, which is in you know less than two weeks. Uh, we're going to be starting this webinar an hour earlier, um, and we think it'll be better tailored for everybody else's schedule, not just ours, but for you guys too. And you know to 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 cover some stuff before the news breaks versus you know versus after. Like we're looking at a lot of stuff after the fact. I, I'd, I'd rather us look at the markets and go, hey, you know, this is what's happening. And then Steve will come on and say, oh, yeah, you know, look, look, here's the euro breaking higher or lower or whatever. So that's one. So that's in, in less than two weeks. Uh, the second is for those of you that are users of Forex analytics um, and, and for those of you that aren't, I'm, I'm opening this up to everybody. We cover a certain amount of pairs uh, or, or, or instruments rather. We have, we cover a lot of, you know, dollar pairs. We cover some cross rates. We color, cover some other instruments. What, and the question is to you guys, and I'm opening this up and let me, let me go ahead and grab something really fast. Uh, we are at, uh, here. I'm going to, I'm going to type this out real big here. Uh, B Morrow. This is my email forexanalytics.com, okay? And what, what instruments would you guys and gals like to see covered or, you know, like, you know, the Euro, Euro Aussie? Like, uh, you know, we, we've toyed around with conversations about, you know, adding a few more pairs but you know, maybe lessening the amount of updates going out, just going putting out updates when things are moving, versus kind of updating everything all the time. Where you're like, okay, nothing's happened there. Why are you even updating it? But giving you more so of a selection of uh, of 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 currency pairs, so this way we can we can target you know some of these cross rates that move. So I'd like to hear from all of you, and 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 even if you're not a subscriber, you're like, man, I tell you what, if you guys covered the uh, you know. Euro Norwegian Krona, I would be a, a subscriber in a heartbeat. That doesn't mean we're going to add it. I just, you know, I'm, I, I'd like to take an informal survey by getting your feedback. So, because um, that's how we can make our product better. We are always trying to make our products better, um, what we do, and we will continue to do that and 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 give you the best service we possibly can and bring you new tools um, that are going to enhance your life as a trader. That's what our aim is to do. So your feedback is extremely valuable. Um, so if you can email me, bmorrow at Forex Analytics, uh, anything, any ideas, any 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 comments, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm open for suggestions. Um, you know, even if you're like, wow, I don't really like this feature, but if you had this feature, it'd be great. Doesn't mean we can add it. I mean, you know, uh, technology is not, it's not a, it's not a, um, you know, I dream of genie blink an eye and things are done. It's, it, it costs money and it takes time. And, you know, we, we put, we put things, um, on our, on our to-do list based on, you know, what we think is going to be most effective, most efficient, and, um, can be done at, you know, uh, a reasonable cost, um, you know, that's going to give us the biggest bang for the buck. So any, any type of feedback would be great. Um, any, and especially any type of pairs, those of you that are Forex analytics subscribers, um, you know, especially want to hear back from you guys and gals. So, uh, and again, 
you know, I, I look at, you know, I look at a lot of, I look at a lot of exotics like the Turkish Lira, you know, the, the Rand, the Peso, you, you know, and, and I like those, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to like those either. You know, it's just, um, you know, we, we want to, we want to get your feedback. So, uh, and we very much appreciate it. All right. Anyway, enough about that. Um, uh, I, I, but I did want to make that announcement. Remember, my email is B M O R R O W. A lot of people like to spare, spell it like bone marrow, but it's marrow M O R R O W. So um, now a couple of things that I'm 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 looking at uh, for today. I still and, and thank you, Dale. As far as the dollar goes, I was uh, long the dollar up until. Ahead of the ECB, I was long like the U.S. dollar, Norwegian krona. I knew, I knew you were out. You were only looking. You used the adjective "dead cat." Yeah, that's dead exactly cat. what you got. Dead that's cat. Right. Dead cat bounce. And and you know what? I, I'm still I'm still um, you know playing some dollar longs. If you're if you're you know a user of forex analytics, you know what I'm targeting right now. Um, but I, I still look at the dollar, and the dollar is extremely heavy. Um, you know, and, and I still think the dollar can bounce where it really, you know, key levels of support, uh, you know, and, and you can look at Forex analytics and look at our, the, 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 the dollar index chart, which will, you know, tell you the story perfectly. Um, you know, it's, we're, we're still at a lot of key support down here. So I, I still think the dollar has the ability to bounce. What I'm more interested in seeing again is the, uh, the, 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 the days uh, or uh, excuse me, to watch the day in the uh, in the equity markets, the S and P is kind of underperforming the Nasdaq, and I'm wondering if the market is falling for Draghi's comments or not. So we're going to find that out a little bit later. You know, do the markets actually go? Yeah, I don't believe you. You're going to be you're going to be tightening. You know, moving forward, how's that going to affect um, you know the, the 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 equity markets? Because we are at all-time highs. I mean, and and we continue to 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 be at all-time highs, and the S and P is you know actually a little bit above that um, that 127% uh, extension now. Um, you can see we're 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 still in you know in in a good rally mode. So, um, you know, I, I'm I'm still watching the equity markets. Uh, I don't know what to do with the yen, um, the dollar yen. Again, if you're if you're you know I, I say this if you're a forex analytics subscriber. You know the dollar yen really just stopped and bounced right from the 200-day moving average. So I'm a little hesitant about being short the dollar yen while we're above the 200-day moving average. We get back below the 200-day moving average, I might actually start thinking about shorting some of the yen pairs. You know, like maybe the euro yen, maybe the pound yen. Um, and uh, Dale, you, you're, you're when you you talked about the pound yen. Um, and you're like, I don't know if I'd be short down here. You're right. I mean, there's a lot of support down here. We've been probing it. And if you look at the pound dollar here, let's go over to uh, let's go over to Forex Analytics because uh, this was posted. But I also uh, sent this out as well on Twitter that we hit basically trend line support and um, and 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 so we are bouncing. So that right there puts a little bit of risk. You know, for those of you that are are trying to play, you know, the pound yen to the downside, you have to realize that the pound is actually getting a little bit of um, uh, of response from there. You know, so that's nice that's look. important. Yeah. yeah. So 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 anyway, um, you know, and, and I don't know what to do with the euro. I wish I, I had a better you know, crystal ball at this point, but it's like I know we're up against 127 percent extension in the euro. I know where trend line supports come in. Um, it didn't dip as far as I wanted to buy it. I really wanted to buy it, be a buyer uh, down at 114.40, but we just didn't get there. So I'm, you know, a little it's hesitant. It's good to know when you don't know, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, uh, if I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> you you know, know a lot I mean? of people, a lot of people will, you know, they have a hard time saying that. You'll never see it on Twitter. I don't know when I was wrong. Uh, Twitter yeah. people choke on it, but I don't know is wisdom. Uh, you know, when I was younger, I I always felt like I knew what was going to happen next, and to to not know and wait for the fog to clear is what you know preserves capital for the good trades. In my in my opinion. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. So it's it's just you know it's just basically you know looking at everything, saying 
you know, I, I need I need a clear signal, and I'm sure I'm, I'm sure the, the 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 signs will line up a little bit better as the day progresses, especially after the open. Um, but I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not sitting here looking at anything, going, okay, I got to be a buyer or a seller of this. I, I I'd really like to see how things shake out a little bit here. Um, but the dollar is still pretty weak. I mean, look at the dollar intraday. I mean, we're we, yeah. we're really, you know, we're we're just you know, yeah. sliding um, pretty much universally across the board. I mean, we got the pound, you know, bouncing. The euro is obviously still firm. Um, you know, so the dollar is still feeling a little bit of heat. But um, but we'll see if the dollar can firm up later in the day. I think a lot of it has to do with what uh, what equities are going to do as well. So, um, but Steve, I'm going to pass it over to you. Uh, I got to I got to get going for the open. And uh, Steve, why don't you grab the chart because I don't want to uh, take it from you. No, it's okay. Today, today I'm a single person here, as you see, uh, because oh, okay. Bell is back in the streaming. Oh, got oh, it. Okay. okay. And uh, the before you start, Steve, uh, I'd like to invite everyone who's listening to us. I don't see the link on my go to meeting page, but perhaps you guys have it. It's for our trial subscription. I was scrolling back. I saw Craig. Craig has a birthday in 10 days, so he's taking the trial today so he could talk. He feels he'll have 10 days before his birthday to talk his wife into it. Okay. Just show, <laughs> your, just show your wife the hit rate during your trial, and she'll sign up too. So, uh, this is a good time, Steve. I don't see it here in the go to meeting. I used to see the link for the trial here. I no, there is in, in in the chat. There is the link to the page uh, to our web page. Huh? It's okay. It's it's right on the home page. It's immediately okay. you know, in in front of. Them. All right. Well, you know, uh, I I think it was also very cool that Blake is open. That's what makes it a community. When uh, the CEO of a company actually goes to uh, users or the community members, whatever you want to call it, face and ask for input about what you guys want to see that you may not be seeing. Uh, personally, Steve, I could get a few subscribers if you guys start covering the Polish Zlotny because uh, I have a butcher that I know that would hedge his pierogies and kielbasa. <laughs> and would and would want to know what the Zlotny is doing <laughs> against the dollar. So hey, hey, uh, you against the dollar or against the euro? Because believe it or not, and I know you won't, you're not going to believe it, I even have technical analysis for it. You really do? On yeah, the look Zlotny. At look, oh, look at look, look at that. Uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah, I'm half Polish. So yeah, I, I, have, I haven't had a look uh, recently, but. Uh, See, um, asking you shall receive everything. This guy, Volgi. Uh, there isn't a piece of paper printed by a government anywhere in the cosmos that Steve doesn't chart. Yeah, so, the reason actually I did that is because I had a friend, and he was asking me what he what he should do about it. Yeah. So you know, I I started having a look at it. Uh, you know, because here was an, uh, an right. a very important point. And then, failure up there. And then we broke below here. Look at this. This was this was actually perfect because technical analysis mm -hmm. works in in everything. You you don't even need to know the fundamentals because. Look at here. We broke below this line. We retested it in an ABC manner. Boom. Yeah. Lower. I mean, yeah. um, you know, it's you know, you can do technical analysis absolutely on everything because you know there are a lot of people that doubt uh, the power of technical analysis because they, they they think like, okay, you know, why should it work? And if you don't know the fundamentals, blah 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 blah, etc. And I repeat, you know, I'm an economist. I do believe in the fundamentals, but I don't believe that they give any any timing signals. So in they essence, don't. it makes them it it makes them uh, useless to trade unless you are a very long term trader. And, and you just made the point, Steve. You could trade IBM. You could trade any instrument. Yes. Uh, with uh, that, you can pull up a chart on. Yes. And the only difference is the title above. The beta and the leverage impl imply uh, you utilize. Correct. So. And there is something also that people do not consider. Fundamentals are being priced in uh, the price the of an instrument. So, in essence, by doing technical analysis, you also incorporate fundamentals. And actually, you do something more important. You incorporate the fundamentals that the market cares. To do something about, and not those that the market still doesn't. You know what I mean? Yes. 
So, for example, when the euro, uh, since a lot of people want to know about the euro, although we, we went over it yesterday, when the euro made this gap here, and this proved to be a runaway yeah. gap, yeah. after breaking cool. out of the triangle, it was, in a sense, also the market's uh, recognition that something is changing here. You know what yes. I mean? Yeah. Um, and, you know, we were talking about the fundamentals as well, because it's one of the times, actually, that fundamentals do matter. I mean, do matter, they are prompt in this sense, because it was obvious that things are changing for the Eurozone. A lot of the risks were being, uh, uh, you know, they were receding, especially with the French elections being out of the way and the uh, situation in Italy being a little bit more stable, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, all, all, all that came, in, came to place and, you know, the market said, OK, you know, I'm not going to be selling euros anymore. OK. So, you know, you, ha you had a clean technical break that also incorporates whatever fundamentals the market uh, wants, the market participants want to take into account. And that's all that matters. All that matters. Okay. Today, for example, how did we begin? And Blake repeated the exact same words because, of course, you know, he, he is a super experienced person. He knows when that happens. Draghi went in and tried to talk down the euro in any way he could. The market could not care less. I mean, the market, you remember, I even talked about that yesterday. I said, you know, I asked Blake, do you believe that Draghi not saying something is going to beat Dovis? And the reason I said that is because I believe that the market, unless somebody proves something else, does believe that the euro has more upside to come and despite the fact that we cannot be buying the euro here without a decent pullback yet because you have no risk reward as i said yesterday you can't be short either because you either participated you know from lower in this party and in, in this case i strongly advise that you keep your position end of story um and, and for quite a long longer actually for, for, for quite, quite a long more um or you are hoping for some kind of catalyst to give you, you know, a deeper pullback to buy. That that that's what I believe, and that, that's you know what um, uh, that, that's what I see in the in the charts, and you know also in this case in the fundamentals. Did Anyhow, you cover, uh, did you cover your guppy, buddy? Oh, you want to show the Nasdaq? Okay. Yeah, and I'll tell you. Yes, I've covered half of it actually. I haven't okay. covered all of it. You know, I worry uh, about you at night. Uh, I'm so and so because you remember I, I said yesterday I, yeah. I summarized the the the, the yen pairs saying, listen, I believe that USD yen is, is in support, and if you yeah. remember since you mentioned it, not only we said that it's either going to go down from there or to 1515, but we also right. had marked exactly in which zone I would expect support. I mean anybody that, wants to, anybody that yeah, wants it's to go right there to on uh, the, you know, dare I say it again. Uh, if you're a subscriber, you you knew about that. So if you were short, you covered, and maybe you're probing longs here. Yeah, uh, exactly. The risk reward now is to be long. That doesn't mean that this is going to hold, but at least it gave us an initial reaction. That's important to begin with. So uh, as I said yesterday, and as I said plenty of days ago, if uh, we don't break this zone. I find no reason to be uh, short the USD yen, and in essence, I find no real big reason to be really bearish the vast majority of the yen pairs. So, actually, the pound yen could have easily, more or less, finished a correction. You see, a simple correction like that. It never touched the zone we were looking for. My initial target was 147.70. But since the retracement, the initial retracement after the first dip was much, took us much higher than I initially expected, that's why I was afraid that the second leg lower might not even touch 140, uh, 144.70 and that it might just go to 145 roughly, which is roughly what it did. So yes, I've, I've covered half my position. And to be honest, I'm not even going to let the other half of my position go to break even. I'll probably book some there as well. I'm going to see what's going to happen today. And I might book the rest of it and, you know, call it a nice counter trend uh, trade and, you know, get it done with. 
Um, that's why I'm also skeptical with the euro yen, uh, especially with the euro yen, actually, because I don't find it impossible uh, that this was uh, the end of uh, the correction, although I still find it more likely to see for this to have been an ABC and now to yeah. see another another leg lower. So that's what I time, think. So you're wrong over the highs. And, and you know what, Steve? I was thinking about this, and you know, maybe you guys don't remember, but you know, central bankers can do more than talk and central planning with QE or tapering all of the central bank operations, you know what they could do uh, that they used to do was directly intervene in the currency markets. When they thought a level was too much, they'd come in, they'd sell euros or they'd buy dollars or they'd sell dollars. So, you he know, if it starts to get out of hand, you think there's a possibility that if he can't talk it down, that perhaps the ECB comes in here and tries to stop the advance by direct intervention or would that be okay. a panic signal to the market okay let me be let me be uh, very accurate about my position in the question having to do with ecb absolutely no there okay. is zero chance that the ecb is going to be selling currency uh, to tame uh, the euro's appreciation my personal opinion okay uh, because they they need to have consent uh, from uh, people that they won't give the consent to do that. There is absolutely no chance that the Bundesbank will ever agree to that. End of story. Okay. So in my opinion, this chance is theoretical, but I would bet a lot of money against that happening. Okay. I'm not, so uh, not, not going to bet you there. I just, yeah, I, just haven't, I just haven't seen a central bank do what they used to do in the 80s and 90s and even early this millennia come in and directly intervene in the markets oh no they do it but usually not the big ones and yeah, uh, russia uh, and russia will do it or turkey, turkey might do it, will do it. Uh, smaller countries that have uh, big depreciation problems have done it and and keep doing it yeah. um, some countries like japan are doing it but in an indirect way, not in, in a direct way. I mean, uh, by, by actually um, pushing flows through the bonds. By the way, because the market is going to get away from us, as you remember, right. I started with the, the NASDAQ, yeah. uh, be, because I want to say something. Um, I actually took a stab short at the NASDAQ at 5,930. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, that's nice why I want to start with the NASDAQ, because I actually did it while we were on the webinar. Um, because I believe it's it's going to give us a short-term pullback. I remind you that this is going to be the 10th consecutive day up, if today is, uh, is a day up. I do believe that the Nasdaq is bullish. I do believe that the Nasdaq is going to go to higher levels. But yeah, you just see a trading opportunity here, low risk. Yeah, but I, but I see a very nice scalp because I really don't believe that we're going to get a 10th and an 11th, and even if we get a 10th, not an 11th consecutive day higher before we have a pullback. I mean, it's a lot froth. It has moved 6.5% within 11 days. I mean, that's already, you know, extreme. Some and the new high didn't confirm, Steve. So, you know, I see it, you, you're looking at that too. Yeah, yeah. So, so some kind of seek out, a small one, more, most probably will happen. Yeah. I might even use the profits if I actually make a profit out of the uh, out of it to buy it to deeper. Buy it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. I was looking and until yesterday. I was looking at a pullback here. Right. Okay, and it, it still can happen. I mean, we still we still may end up having a pullback. You know, a deeper pullback to retest. You know, this channel. Yeah. Um, but minimum expectations, you know, if we see a pullback to 5,800, might prove enough for another push higher then. Okay. Right, so that's what, about 40 pips? Uh, from from where we are now, you mean? Oh, oh 120 pips. Uh, yeah, 100 and, uh, 100 and actually roughly 130 handles from, um, okay. 135 uh, handles roughly from the high that we had just a few minutes ago. Uh, you know, uh, here we went all the way to 5,935, actually. Right. Okay. Um, so I do think that this is due for a little pullback. So this is like a little scalp. 
um, I, I could even, I mean, if I see, you know, another move higher, I would actually, I will actually probably double my position because I, I consider it very, very hard that even if I double up, you know, higher, uh, this is not going to get in the money at some point uh, because, you know, how many consecutive days in a row can you have and there is no real catalyst um, at the moment to, to expect, you know, that this is going to be 14, 15 or whatever uh, consecutive days. So like a 100 handle pullback is more than welcome yeah. and the, going to come somewhere from here but that does not change my thesis you remember um, a friend of ours here at an, an attendee of the webinar was telling me the other day we were actually here we were almost two percent lower he was telling me that you know a three percent risk to make a ten percent downside is a good trade and they shouldn't be saying to people that you know this thing is bullish and it's going to go higher I didn't advise anybody to buy because I, 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 I refrain from doing it myself um, in general, because yeah, I do believe that prices are ridiculous, but I really do believe that the Nasdaq is going to resume higher. A, a pullback first, though, is more than likely at the moment after the price action we've seen here. We've already we've already um, registered, uh, counting only up to yesterday, uh, 10 out of the last 11 days uh, are days that the, the index has moved higher, and the last nine consecutive ones. So as you understand, there has to be some type of a little reversal here before moving higher. And that's what I'm betting on. Okay, good. So you have a few questions? Definitely. And we'll have a look at all of them. Okay, USD CAD. USD CAD. Oh my God, USD CAD. Let me see how many times we can repeat the same thing. And I'm not saying it in a bad way, but let me be very clear about this. The NOC is bouncing today, huh? Yes, it is. Did you it see is. my tweet? Uh, uh, no, I, I didn't. I, I had so many meetings today. Uh, well, it was yesterday where I said, and you know, where I, I kind of break down the video on the Twitter, what, and you know, I said update. Uh, I did update on Euro Pound Blake talk uh, short scalp in Euro and uh, uh, Volgi short the no, no joke. <laughs> yeah, that, that that was a beast, and this is a beast as well. Um, you, you remember that I was short the USD CAD from exactly the top, and I got knocked out here. So uh, the good thing is that I took my blood back with USD knock. So you know. I don't feel so bad about it. Anyhow, I've learned to, you know, let let this pass. This has been a beast. And what I saw yesterday is what I see now. At some point, and it, ha it has to be at some point soon, we are going to get a pullback in the USD CAD. Same applies to the USD NOC. But in my opinion, that will not have completed the impulsive move lower. It will need one more leg lower. So, in my opinion, don't get, don't get trapped here because the first move higher, the first the first actually rebound higher, is most probably going to prove to be a bull trap. Okay. Uh, obviously, if you buy USD CAD today, you have a decent chance of getting in the money at some kind of a pullback or even at break even. But do I see something that tells me yes, today's the day I should be buying it? Absolutely not. This thing is incapable of putting any kind of rebound. I mean, look even at, at today's candle. At the moment, it's again a shooting star. Okay. I mean, it's it's completely incapable of catching any bid. So uh, perhaps it needs to move a little bit lower yet. Okay. I have no idea. Uh, what I can tell you for sure is that you shouldn't be trying to go long necessarily it's a better idea if you look for a pullback to go to be long it's a better idea if you look for a pullback for a recovery to be short okay that's my advice about it and nothing much has changed okay USD knock did try to put a pullback it's now back to um, uh, just giving us an inverted hammer if it moves a little bit lower it's going to be an outside black candle. Um, as I said yesterday, for me, the critical level is eight. I might cover half of it there. Um, but this is also what I see in USD NOC, so nothing much has changed, okay? Um, let's see what other questions we have.
Uh, Euro USD daily, AB equals CD in channel break. Let's have a look at this chart. AB equals, okay, AB equals CD. Okay, so this leg will equal, uh, equals this, uh, this leg at exactly that point. Okay, that's, that's actually, you know, a good observation. Let's see if it actually works and, and gives us a high. What we've said about the Euro USD, uh, which falls more or less in the zone you're looking at, is that a little bit higher, we have another level that we're monitoring, which is this. It's actually the 2016, uh, the May 2016 high. It's a little bit higher at 116.16. So, okay, this is another confluence that perhaps this level gives us a rejection. But even if we get rejected from here or from a little bit higher or whatever, then, you know, I'm going to tell you the following. How can you be short as long as 114.50, which is the breakout here, holds? You can't. You know what I mean? I mean, it might work, but, you know, this thing is bullish. And it, it, it needs to at least start breaking some support levels to, to consider, you know, any kind of, a, of an alternative. And we don't just need to see some kind of a rejection after this kind of an uptrend, but we also need to see some kind of an acceleration, some kind of, you know, um, a, a push to, to break through some levels. We have none of that yet, none of that. So as long as we don't, you know, uh, you, you should be very, very nimble, okay? Don't, don't try to fight this market because, you know, it, it might not, you know, it might not work out. Uh, Kiwi and Euro Kiwi. Okay, um, let's have a look at them. Let's begin with the Euro Kiwi since we were in the Euro pairs, and then we'll go to Kiwi. Okay. okay, Euro Kiwi, mixed price action as you see. We had this deep lower, we, we are moving higher, we got rejected again from this zone. This fulfilled our minimum expectations as you see here. Uh, but it, it's not that it has rolled over and it's currently dying. It's more or less chopping around. So as long as it does that, I can tell you that I have a clear bias. Obviously, you cannot be uh, really short unless we break below 155.50. On the other hand, as long as we remain, uh, you know, below 158, you know, he, because this might, just, just to be clear, this might end up being um, either the beginning of something higher that's why we had done this blog post uh, you know some uh, a week ago or 10 days ago when it was but on the other hand it can just evolve to be just like a more complex correction in which case it might continue having overlapping price action and perhaps slowly rebounding higher but at the moment, you know, what I'm seeing here is not really convincing. I mean, the first move higher was nice. Then we got we got a huge, uh, you know, two candles that immediately retraced like 10 days of price action. Now we're trying to climb higher again. You know, I, I, I took some profits here, not a lot of them when we rolled over from here. And to be honest, I want to I want to have more clarity before I do something. So, you know, uh, sorry for not being able to help more, but when I don't have, you know, much clarity, I'd rather refrain from doing some, something. But I can tell you one thing for sure, and this is very important. Euros' uh, rejection from the confluence, we saw that, I think, yesterday, of the A, B, C, which was at 144.70, which was exactly yesterday's low, and it's exactly... Um, uh, what we seem to be holding today again. We, we prompted below it within this support zone and now we are about to register a bullish engulfing candlestick. So this kind of a rejection after reaching our target, you see even two days ago we marked that we want to see a move lower, is important. And actually this candlestick that I see today is going to force me out of this trade and to book my profits in the short because this can easily have been an ABC and that's it. So I want to see how this closes today. 
because this might be a good signal for another move higher okay it's important to see what's going to happen but this is a critical moment for eurozi a very critical moment for eurozi so euro q is not so clean but eurozi is a lot cleaner it found support exactly where we expected it to find support and it is producing a formidable candle that you just can't ignore okay yeah, blake tw blake uh tweeted about that in my stream before it turned. Oh, I didn't see it, but it's one more one more time that then I, I, I see what Blake is seeing here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is you know, one of the pairs, this is one of the pairs uh, considering adding, right? Euro Aussie. Yes. Euro Aussie, yeah. Euro Kiwi, Euro, um, uh, sorry, Pound Aussie, Pound Kiwi is f four of the pairs we're looking at. Because well. Euro Aussie is a mover, man, and I've been seeing you trade it well and Blake trade it well it's a moving pair it's not me trading it well is a market behaving well oh, if a okay. market is behaving well it's easy to trade it well I mean I don't want to take much credit I'm lucky to have a clean market here you know what I mean okay the markets trading well yes I mean it okay okay now somebody is mentioning Eurocard, and he, he's the second person to mention it today. And I would I would have gone uh, through it. Listen, we are trying to build a base here. I was still expecting a move a little bit lower to to to, to close the gap. Okay, uh, did we actually close the gap? Ah, almost. We almost did. Um, I'm close to actually, you know, calling this a good trade and taking profits. <laughs> I have to tell you, Dale. I mean, it it has already moved a lot. Uh, it seems to be building a base here, so I'm going to consider what I'm going to do with that. I, I might I might actually book this one as well. And now having to do with Euronoc after today's price action, I don't believe Euronoc is done, but I might actually end up booking half of it as well. So today is going to be some uh, profit taking uh, day for me. On the other hand, I haven't done that yet but I might end up uh, within the next couple of days booking some losses in the euro uh, pound um, simply because I will leave it some room for an incrementally new high uh, but not more than that so you know euro pound has already rebounded more than I would like but it still is not invalidating you know my initial position about it I will give it the ability to go closer to 0 090, but not much more than that. Okay, so I'm I'm already considering this as a possible losing trade. We'll see. We'll see. But now the chances obviously have increased that this is not going to work out. Ozicad, Ozicad. Okay, I recently uh, talked about Ozicad. And what I said about Ozicad and it remains, let's have a look at it. Oh, and we need to, to look at Kiwi as well, sorry. First of all, that's what I drew yesterday, okay? That we either all over from that, uh, from, from there, you know, because we had a lot of confluences uh, or we move again to this trend line. Today in Ozicad is an important day. Why? Because we have a key reversal. So today uh, is a bad day if you want to be a bull. On the other hand, I need to reiterate once again, I don't understand why you would want to be involved with a pair that is actually within a big triangle and not try, I mean, both Aussie and CAD have been really strong. Why aren't you looking for a weak currency to be long uh, the Aussie or the CAD um, against, you know what I mean? Uh, I think I think you have better chances but if you're looking at it you know and you definitely need to trade it today's reversal you know an outside black day it's also a key reversal is very significant it's it's formidable so if the rejection happened from the 200 DMA the 50 DMA was a little bit lower this level was important plenty of times in the past I mean uh, you know let's see also if we had a fib level there Yes, that was the 50% FIB. So, you know, that was a very nice confluence that created the rejection. 
So be careful uh, if you're long about the Ozigad. Okay. Uh, Kiwi. Kiwi. Yes. And sorry for the delay. We promised it a lot of times. Listen, I have a problem with Kiwi. I was short twice. I booked a little bit of profits, like around 40 pips each time. I found confluences to be short every time, but it wasn't playing ball. This time, it's not playing ball to the upside. I mean, it's it's obviously rejecting any any attempt to short it, but now the momentum loss is more than obvious. And more than obvious is also its inability to close above this high, contrary to what the Aussie has done. So I think we are at a very critical juncture for the Kiwi. If the bulls don't actually manage to reclaim these highs and close above it soon, it might roll over and this time it might actually produce a much deeper pullback. So I'm more inclined to be looking for an opportunity to short it than to be long. Okay, but I'm, not, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm not there yet. I'm missing a trigger. I'm missing a... Give me your mouse. Give me your yeah. mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing a good candlestick to tell me, right. yep, that's it. It's rolling over. Okay, so I'm more... Uh, inclined to say yes, I'm taking a short here, but not there yet. I might do it tomorrow. I'm going to let you know, as I always do. It might happen to be during the meeting, uh, during the webinar, sorry, like I did with NASDAQ. It might be before it, it might be after it. Uh, you know, you, you, you'll find out. Uh, if if I be, really believe in it, I'm, uh, you know, for Forex Analytics members, I, I'll even create a, a pattern in play for it, uh, obviously. But I need to see something that will convince me. We're not there yet. I see signs that it doesn't have the ability to actually break higher. That's the first step. Now, I, I need to see evidence that it will actually break down. So that's what I'm missing. Okay, let's see what I did not cover from the questions. Who do we have today, by the way? Um, Roberto. Hey. Ah, yeah, yeah, you saw it at the beginning. Sorry, my mistake. You know, I'm growing old and I'm sleeping too little and obviously, you know, I'm forgetting. Ah, S&P. Uh, yes, S&P. So let's have a look at our beloved SPX. I have a GAN guy coming in tomorrow who thinks we're going to peak at uh, 2485. 2485. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's have a look at it. Um, in SPX, the only new thing I have to show is that there is also the possibility of this rising wedge that you see here, which we currently seem to be throwing over it. For the SPX, more or less the same view that we had for the Nasdaq applies. And I think it's even cleaner from an Elliott wave perspective because look, this was a corrective move lower. There is no question that it was a corrective move lo lower for plenty of reasons. It was overlapping, it was in three waves, etc., etc., etc. But let's have a look at the move higher. The move higher was one, two, three, four, five. Right. So and we have also seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Today is the tenth consecutive day higher. So already nine consecutive days higher. Today might end up being the tenth. Now let's have a look at an extension of the wave of wave one to wave four to wave five, sorry. And you see that an equality of wave one to wave five in this little uptrend uh, is at 2,475, which is exactly the level we currently are. So that would tell me we already got this move higher and we actually drew these two when we were down there. Everybody that was in the webinar remembers that. So that tells me that we are also due for a pullback here 
perhaps to retest the breakout level at 2450 before moving higher and before you go to your um, interview Dale here is a freebie since we talked a little bit about Elliott wave analysis let's have a look here's a freebie for everybody let's have a look of what Gregor is seeing in the SPX okay so S&P 500 Elliott wave just for you ha huh. so as you see Gregor has an equivalent target than what I counted but he's counting it as a, a wave five so he's not looking at the structure here uh, he's looking at, at the bigger structure so Gregor is also thinking that we should be topping at from what I see here it's a little bit above 80 2480 but that's indicative so he also thinks that we are close to an interim top before we see a bigger correction lower as you see and then he expects a new high let's go to his weekly chart so you see this, this view from the weekly as well so Gregor believes also that we are quite soon to the point that we're gonna roll over for a bigger correction an ABC correction for a wave four of uh, the broader structure and then another uh, another move higher um, the short-term structure as I showed you because Greg is not seeing that at a one one hour chart tells me that we are very close to being there very close to being there okay I showed it to you one two three four five uh, I don't think we should see much higher than 2480 80 little before a correction lower now I know that Gregor is looking for a bigger correction I like to take it one step at a time I have to tell you one thing 2450 which was the previous breakout level from the previous all-time highs is going to be the first support no matter what but the critical level will remain which is the level that held at the previous correction lower 2400 so you know you might scalp it lower we might get there we might not but as long as we remain above 2400 you know there is no technical damage that will have been done to the S&P even looking at the short-term chart okay Douglas McKenzie our friend here is asking for a nosy kiwi fast view sure let's do that and okay after that roberto yeah. is waiting yes and this one as you see almost retested it depends on how you draw it it retested this you know descending trend line and this is a key reversal so this is the point that you book some okay i haven't done yet because for me this is an important zone but if I see a penetration of this zone as well I'm gonna do it if we see uh, a retest of this zone and the rebound we might actually break from this important long-term trend line as well okay so this is a big rejection this is a key reversal let's see what one uh, one zero seventy four does and uh, you know if, if it slices through it as bad as well you might want to book some okay thank you Dale have a great interview Thank you, Steve. See you all tomorrow. Roberto Ruarte, welcome to FACE, Roberto. I'm making you the presenter now. Looking forward to hearing your voice and seeing your screen and want to thank you for the real nice promo that you put together for us. Roberto, thank you very much. It's nice to meet you. Okay, then. Thank you very all much. All right, buddy. I, I was okay. showing people the uh, beautiful tweet you put put together. You know, I have to say, uh, you're the first person I've interviewed, maybe a thousand by now, that put some energy into, uh, uh, you know, how special it is to be interviewed by me. <laughs> so I, I appreciate it. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I know that English is your second language, but you know the chart that we have on our screen right now is a universal language, isn't it? So yeah. yes, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Okay. Yes. 
So why, why don't you tell us a little bit, Roberto, how you got into the trading industry, uh, how it was for you in the beginning to get you to this point where you're providing research for people in the market. So uh, tell us a little bit about your trading journey. Yes, I began to study the market uh, 25 years ago. Um, first, I, I read some books about technical analysis from, mil, uh, from mil, uh, 1990. I went to United States, to Atlanta, Georgia, to study with Robert Proctor Jr. Yes, the Elliot Way. Oh, is wow. my first. Yes, okay. Oh. I, I, I went to Atlanta, Georgia, five years, five years, and, and I studied Elliot Wave. I right. am opinion, okay, yes, I like very much to study cycles, to study long terms, and, and also, uh, I, I trade in, uh, in the short term in the market, okay? Right. So you're... you're so really, uh, wow, what an influence to have. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, did it, because uh, we know what kind of, you know, long-term bias Prechter had. I mean, for a long time, he was looking for the stock market to fall apart. You know, he's also called some great longs and stuff. But overall, if you're a Prechter follower, you're looking for the end game to be a deflationary scenario and cash to be king and everything to go down. Am I correct that that's his uh, long-term outcome that central planners, central bankers interrupted it for about eight years, nine years now? Yes, I, I believe that the market um, clearly, I, I take, a, I, I can show some, some chart for you. This okay. is between the US dollar the US dollar index, yes, right. and the yes. gold, no? yes, and, uh, and the gold, and gold, yes, US dollar and, and the gold. Uh, this is the the gold, and the, this is the US dollar. The US dollar uh, have a cycle. Uh, uh, for example, you have seven years yes. uh, dollar downtrend. Down. Right, seven, seven years down. Uh, seven years down, seven or eight years up, seven or eight years down again, seven right. or eight years up. This is the cycle, no? I believe yes. this uh, began at, uh, uh, at at the bottom of the market in, in eight years ago, and I believe that there may be the last year um, and the the cycle the, the strong the super dollar for me has finished okay? Okay. and then so 104 was the approximate high on the move um uh that you know i mean there are there still are some uh, dollar bulls left they'll probably buy breaks all the way down but um what will give you confirmation that we're headed down for the next seven or eight years from this year what what technical level would it be back under 92 closing under 92 yes. that would be your yes. confirmation yes. This is, okay this level this level is the the fourth of lesser degree for me is very important yes okay we market uh, break down this level and um, we have the confirmation on the long-term cycle again the dollar and uh, to, to the downside yes but uh, uh, this chart showed uh, that the goal is inverse to to use dollar in and, and, right. and in this at this time the goal go up very sharply at this time of the super dollar the goal um, goes down very sharply and at this right. time the the the, the goal go up and the other time go well, down is inverse okay Right. And we'll, the next five and eight years may be the time to the call. Okay, I I'm very bullish about uh, gold and precious metals. I believe the gold miners is, is very very good for the near uh, near term and and the medium term and long term. Okay, so 
Okay. Okay. Really, they're all lined up now. See, the next, the, the next year for me will be dollar uh, with the doubt uh, for the downside uh, and the gold for the upside. Okay. Okay. The first chart. By you, I do, uh, when it comes to the dollar index, which is heavily weighted euro which has been leading the way, is that your preferred long, the long side of euro over say pound or anything else? The euro? Yes, yes, I, I, I'm going to, to see uh, several close. Uh, okay. Obviously, uh, I believe that the, the euro, uh, euro uh, may be bought on a 103, right. and then uh, the main uh, trend is up, but, in the short term, I believe that all all traders are very, very, very bullish about euro. I am very bearish about US dollar, and then this is the problem to continue the trend. I believe in the short term is possible the correction for for the euro, yet correction for the dollar to the upside because the market uh, fell down very sharply. The dollar uh, always are very, very bearish to the US dollar. And I believe the market needs a, a counter trend rally to 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 improve the the numbers, and then uh, the dollar will be ready to 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 resume the the downside trend. Okay. Yes. Okay. And the, the another the other chart for me is very important to do to 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 show. Sorry. Uh, this 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 is this is chart should show that the relation between the commodities and uh, um, the, the stocks. Stock, yes, the stock. If you can compare, you can see that this level is too 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 uh, cheap. And, uh, I need. A little low, uh, I need a <laughs> little low to buy some commodities, okay? And then my question is, or commodity are very cheap, or the Dow are very expensive, or uh, both of them, no? Okay? <laughs> For me, it's time to buy commodity, and it's time to sell a, a stock chain, okay? A, a United, a, a, Okay. It's time to sell U.S. shares, except commodity-based shares like gold shares and oil shares and copper yes. shares. Yes. Do you, do you think that yes. uh, the shares with underlying commodities being their business will be able to prosper in a bear market in equities overall? Yes, I believe, for example, the uh, the gold miners. I, I like very much gold miners. I yes. don't like. Uh, oil because I believe the oil is not complete uh, the, the bear market. I Are you believe looking for new lows uh, under last January's lows in the crude like for a lot of bears are looking for 25 again. Are you? Yes, I, be I believe so. I believe that the, uh, the, the um, women from $26 uh, in oil is counter term rally. I believe it's way four. It's way four. Maybe way four. Maybe a triangle. Maybe uh, 55 uh, it was the top of way A, or, okay. or or is the top of the way four. Right. Uh, in case I prefer uh, another down leg to the downside uh, below 25 dollar. The okay. The oil is the only commodity that don't like. I like food, yes. I like uh, so all the grains, all the grains, all the softs, yes. coffee, yes. sugar, yes. soybeans, corn, yes. wheat. Yes, I, I, I like food and I like precious metals, but basically, okay. Yes. I don't like, for example, banks. I feel like the banks are in the in the last. Uh, in W5, for example, if XLF for me is very near to the top, yes, 25, maybe, yes, Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan for me are right. trying to sell, yes. Okay. I believe what, that. What, what do you think about everyone shorting volatility? That, that's been a discussion lately. 
the VIGs <laughs> trading at twenty, you know, twenty-five year lows, et cetera. You, yeah, uh, yes, you, yes. You, are there any any ways that you play uh, something looking for higher volatility? Because most of the instruments have major decay yes. in them. Yeah, yes. I believe the volatility is in the low in the history and now. Uh, I I have one chart from uh, 200 years from volatility and the volatility now is in the low is in the lower lowest level of, of the history i believe okay. it's by and uh, obviously when when the volatility is very cheap uh, the, the the market is very confident about about risk no about yes. if, uh, um, if, yeah, they're getting now. You for it? You for it? Yeah, yes, okay. yes. Because see, and yeah, uh, for example, uh, most of investors prefer to buy some bonds of Argentina, some bonds of Gazprom, some bonds of Petrobras, some bonds of maybe PDVSA. Uh, because Jam they're desperate for yield. Because they're desperate for yield, right? Yeah, yes. Jam bonds uh, against uh, uh, treasury bonds of the United States because the, the, the rise in the United States go up and the other, the, the, the inversion prefer to, to take uh, to take high risks. Okay. I believe the market in, in general is prepared to, to a, a big downtrend, a big bear market. Uh, United States and uh, um, from uh, 80 years ago, we never have a correction last uh, more than 20, 25 uh, percent in the Standard Poor's or 20 percent uh, in the Dow Jones. I believe uh, this year, this year maybe August, September, October, maybe the beginning of the bear market in the United States. I believe that this bear market will be with the the, the dollar downtrend. Going the down. Dollar going, going down. down. Yes, yeah, okay. the dollar going down and the and the uh, gold go go up very sharply. I believe no, and then okay. uh, and, and and then I I I um, I'm going to prepare my portfolio for this situation. Okay. In, in other charts tell you. What happened with the bull market in Standard & Poor's? This is the second most more important bull market from uh, from the history. Okay, you can right. see in this. Okay, and this is the best one. No, the best one. Yeah, yeah. percent into the upside. Right. Clinton time. Clinton time. Yes. Uh, if, uh, but this is. Uh, if you you have the low of S&P 666 six, uh, yeah. for this level, we have a 270 percent of uh, increase. I believe it's very near, it's very very old the bull market. Uh, this time to to prepare for the bear market. I believe a correction in in United States for 50% or 40% or maybe like uh, uh, eight years ago, okay? okay? But if you want to, to say what's happened with the US dollar index, the US dollar, for me, this is my preferred, preferred tone. Yes, this is the US dollar, okay. again, the, the currency, the old right. car, seven currencies, okay? I believe okay. that tone in, in 100 and, and so down the rest of the year to the 90 level. That's what you're looking yeah, for? Yes, I, yes. I, I believe that this is the top is very important. I believe the market goes down to this level. This level is very important. 92. 92. Very, yeah. very, very important. And I believe that the market uh, breaks down this level, 19. I believe the bear market uh, will confirm for the US dollar. Okay, so uh, uh, let's call it a weekly or monthly closes. I don't know if this is a weekly or monthly. Yes, or, or weekly, weekly closes is a... Uh, weekly? Is, is okay, weekly. so weekly, weekly closes under 90 seals the deal 
for a long-term bear market in the dollar. Correct? Yes, yes, I, I, I believe. I believe so. I believe so. Okay. Yes. Uh, I very, very, uh, very, very positive about gold. This is the chart of the gold. I believe okay. the 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 bottom in the gold was uh, uh, at the end of, uh, of the uh, at the beginning of the uh, le, le, the last year. This right. is a, this wave, the first wave of the of the counter trend rally. Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is the second wave. I believe we need the the third wave. Okay. We need. Okay. Go to the. Let me ask you, Roberto. You know, a lot of wave guys. You know, there's always alternate accounts and stuff, and a lot of yes. people, uh, Elliot practitioners. Um, this looks a lot like account that I've seen from Peter Temple. Do you know who he is? Peter Temple, oh, yes, World yes, Cycles guy. All right. Yeah. So, uh, what you're saying is this rally in gold, even though we could go to 1500, it's corrective. But the real bottom in gold doesn't happen for several years, and it's going to be under a thousand, right? Yes, yes, I believe so. I believe so because the the the, the this downtrend is in five waves. Yes, it's one, two, three, four, and five. If you see five waves to the downside, the the rally is counter turn move to the fifty okay. of retirement. Okay. Or 61 okay wow. believe and, and that the market go to this level and it's possible to go to 1000 or below to complete the bear market from uh, from five years ago I, wow. I I mean this is the the old the the very opportunity to buy gold so to mm -hmm. rally uh, for the, for, um, okay. in the future so that'll be your long-term buy down there. This is an intermediate term move to 1500. Then, uh, then we probably enter the phase where everything's going down, even gold. Uh, yes. You have a view on you have a view on the bond market. There's a lot of debate on, say, the U. Uh, the 10-year note and yields. You, you have a view on interest rates in the U.S. while this is happening. Yes, or do you want yes. to go to a currency? Yes, you know, what, yes. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, this is uh, the other chart is about silver. Yes, okay. and twenty-five. The picture is the same. Yes, to uh, twenty-five. One of, yes. one of my partners is going to want a eight by ten glossy picture of you, Stelios, because uh, he's a big sil silver bull. So uh, you just he's now going to be a groupie of Roberto Ruarte now. Okay, go ahead, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I I very very um, positive about um, silver. I believe silver is more volatile than gold. Yes, silver is more industrial than gold. Gold right. is precious metals, and now silver not not only precious metal because the industrial is very important now. But uh, I think the will the silver will will uh, will rally. Uh, uh, to twenty-five dollars or twenty-two dollars in the one years or two years against counter term rally, but very important counter term. Okay, uh, yeah. I, I, my prediction for Trump administration is uh, the end of super dollar. Yes, the end the super dollar for me. Uh, okay. a sharp uh, a, a loss in Wall Street. So, uh, the, well, you know, he's he's taking credit for the advance. So, do you think he'll take credit if you're right on a thirty percent decline? Yes, I, I believe the, the 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 Wall Street will be fifty percent decline in two years. Okay, fifty, wow. 50 at least. Okay, wow. I believe the the market. Where do you where do you trade from, Roberto? Are you in Mexico? Yes, I, I am in Mexico. Now, now I am in Argentina because I am Argentinian, yes. But oh, okay. this, this is holiday in Mexico. As yeah, I, will, you, <laughs> will you fix up an extra bedroom for me so I don't have to be in the U.S. if you're right? Where you could, you know, adopt me as your, you know, your uncle or something and I could come live in Argentina with you? <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I'd rather watch it on TV than be here. Anyways, so what's it's the very last cold month? here in Argentina. It's very cold That's here. Okay. I grew up in Chicago. I grew up in Chicago. Uh, I know cold. So what does Sabita <laughs> what does Sabita de Tasa Hasa case Quibra of Wall Street mean? Ah, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, I, I'm going to, to show you about um, Tristory Bond, okay? okay? I believe the, 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 cue, the key about the next bear market because I, I'm Is going it, to, to show me. Interest the rates going up. I bet you're a bond bear. I'm just yeah. predicting you're a bond bear. So it's going to be yes. higher interest rates and a confidence crisis. So rates go up because the dollar's under pressure and higher interest rates pop the bubble. Am I reading you correctly? Yes, I believe I really so because I can show you, for example, this this chart. This chart is the um, in uh, ten years, right? Yeah. Okay. It's just the ball. Yes. Yeah. It's a uh, ten year yield. Okay. All right. I don't know. Yeah, it's up. <laughs> yes. For example. Uh, this is a quarterly or monthly monthly chart. The monthly chart, yes. Yeah. You can see it here. Uh, yeah, we get back over. Uh, quarter, 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 quarter. We get back over 260, and the trend in rates is sharply up. Yes, but uh, for example, the the, the long term is uh, the, the trend is down the, to the downside. Right. I, this point is very important for me. I believe it was the bottom. The bottom was 21 years of the downtrend in the right. interval. Okay. The top right. of the interval was in 1981 with Reagan. Okay. And then yeah, the market. Well, yeah. Paul Volcker was a Fed guy who took short term yes, rates. To yes. 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 But, so, but uh, take, take a look at this picture. Uh, this is 93, the, the, right. the go up very sharply, uh, yeah. 90 and 94, and, and this top was the beginning of the, the tequila in, in Mexico, because it, this is the top in Mexico, yes, this go up in the, uh, in the this rally in the, in the right, broke, the bull market in Mexico and all emerging market. Okay, this rally, this rally in in, the, the, in 1997, yes, broke the rally in um, in Russia. Yes, it was tequila, uh, vodka, vodka, named yeah. vodka. Okay, and right. then. This this rise increase in the in the right this rally in the yeah. right it was ninety eight and ninety nine and was the top of the of the Nasdaq of the dot com yes exactly the top was and right. March was yes right. and the and Nasdaq fell down eighty percent here this was the top the top here the um, financial crisis. Yes, yes, a Lehman crisis. Yes, here right. and the top. This is increased. Uh, was the fell down in Europe? Yes, and this yeah. increased the top for Mexico and Brazil. And then I believe that this uh, go up in the in the right will blow the uh, bubble in United States again. Okay, I believe that the 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 interest rate go up go up to the three percent to the three percent and then at this point i believe that the ma the market the, the stock market will grow yes the bubble will grow okay which the increase in the interest rates broke bubble this is bubble in mexico bubble in russia bubble in and uh, nasdaq bubble in in united states bubble in europe bubble in Brazil and the next bubble will will broke it will be United States I believe 
And the, this is the reason. The reason for me will be the increase in, in interest rates, okay? And you think 3% should do it? Yes, 3%. I believe the, 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 in the short term, in the short term, I believe the market fell down now, uh, fell down. I believe this is uh, uh, only a correction, yes, only a correction about uh, this increase. I believe uh, 20, 20, 20, uh, 2020. Yeah, so that, so if we take out 240, we're going to 270 or higher. Okay, yeah. yes, yes. I believe, I maybe mean, this is head and shoulder, okay, maybe. Yeah. Pattern, yes. So we should hold two two. Got it. Beautiful yes. look. Yes, it is maybe the head and shoulder and believe the, the last the last increase in the in the intro will be fatal okay. for the for the stock. Okay. Okay, and that's where the market peaks. Do you have a number? You think we're gonna trade twenty five hundred S and P's, twenty four eighty, twenty six hundred. What do you think as far as S&P's potential price high is? And then we'll wrap uh, it up. Yes, I believe we are we are very near the S&P. I can see you, I can show the S&P. For me, S&P is, uh, here is the, 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 the chart. Uh, I believe this is, in the in the in the medium terms, uh, the, the 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 increase from or, or the rally from eighteen hundred. Yeah, yeah, yes. After, yes, this is a way five. One, okay. two, three, four, five. I believe we are near to complete with five. I believe from the, the to, to to count this is one one way one way two maybe way three. Is near to complete. We right. four, five to complete. Right. That's what I'm seeing a lot. Yeah. 2,600. Okay. 2,600. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but the other possibility is to count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and the rally is uh, end. And then right. The so we're either going to get a four. It's either done or we're going to get a four and then a five. Yes, four, four and five, or the, the end of the all the, the, the bull market. My difference, Robert Prechter, this, this is my, my teacher. Robert Prechter is announced the, the end of the bull market for the Dow. I can show you the, the, the charts from not, from the the, the 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 big crisis. Yes, this is this is the counts of my master. My teacher, sorry. Yeah. He he he's counting. He's counting from here. Is one one, way two, way three, way four, and complex. Yes, I B C yeah. and X and triangle and one two three four five. This is the end of way three four nineteen thirty two. Okay, and yeah. begin. The best bear market here, the best bear market because the, the market maybe may the, the, during eight years or, or ten years or to eleven years, okay. Right. Uh, but uh, I I'm going to uh, to write to the main newspaper uh, about the about the stock exchange because the people don't. Uh, this is the other the other form to to see the, the the stock exchange you can see the market top here in 1906 okay and the market not good not uh, good business for yeah. 20 okay this is yeah. the this is the, the 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 bull market yes right the roaring 20. very sharply you can yeah. see you Put here and the market twenty five yeah. years, twenty six years to recover at this level, okay? And then right. yes, another, yes, and then sixteen years to recover recover this point, okay? And this is this is an important bull market, but here you have the crash of nineteen 
87, no? Yeah, this is the, yes, yeah. the market right. the, the, again, and you can see again all in this bear market because in this MP this level was similar, okay? In the Dow, this level was uh, much bigger than this level, but in this MP it was the same, and then I believe the top of in, in the, 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 the end of this descent, the, the beginning of this century, uh, the market need 13 years to go up. Yes, I believe yeah. this this is the, the the business. This is the business. This is the business. This is the business. This is the business. But the other are trying to recover in important crisis, and I believe we are near near to end this bull market, yes? My count is, this This is my count. One, two, one, complex two, three, four, five. This is why three. Why four is the 50, 50 percent of decrease, and then a way five to the upside, and mm -hmm. uh, in, in the next 10 years will be an, one crash like this crash, okay? It's so we have a, we have kind of like a 29 style crash and then the market makes new highs after that. Yes, yes, that because I use, look, I use a Fibonacci, Fibonacci numbers. If you want to change numbers in uh, 1929, you you can use uh, the, the next crisis will be, uh, I believe, um, in, in, in five years, five years. The next number, the next year of Fibonacci for me is uh, um, 2021, okay? In in five in four years, okay? I believe okay. that the market uh, in four years, okay? I believe that the market will have a correction, very important correction, or uh, more than 20%, the bear market, 40% perhaps, 50%, and then go up again for the for the last time, and we are had a crisis like this. Okay. Okay. So okay. So you're you're looking for 30, 40 per percent soon, and then one more hurrah. Okay. Yes, one more yes. big move up. Uh, what's the yen going to do during this time frame? Uh, I want to wrap it with the yen because the yen is uh, the big risk on risk off currency. Do you have a chart you want to share with us quickly in the yen? Yes. Yes. Yes, I can. I can, I can. And aren't you glad you came on? You know, you're doing an excellent job. I could understand everything you say. So we we didn't need any prepared questions for you to give an effective talk here today, Roberto. Great job. Okay. Okay. Japanese gen. Uh, yes, I believe uh, this is. I, I don't know that. I, I think in the crisis. <laughs> Generally, the Japanese yen go uh, yeah. go up and the dollar go down. No, but I don't know what happened with the chart. But because in the chart, I am no so bully for the Japanese yen. Yes, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you're you're neutral. That's okay to not know. You sure have enough markets to be involved with. When you don't have a clear picture on a market, it's fine to avoid. Don't you agree? I believe I think that the, the 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 next crisis will be with the dollar uh, with the dollar the downside. Right. I, I believe that it's possible to count. This is five years up. The yeah. will be A will be B and we'll right. see the downside. Okay. That's what I was. Yeah. I believe okay. because the difference between my counts and the count of my teacher is my teacher uh, see a crisis similar to the, the depression. Okay, uh, my count is very different. I believe this is one A, V, and C to the ninety-five or nineteen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's down. Uh, Forty percent, the yen go, uh, fell down. Uh, the, the dollar fell down. You get the yen to to the fifty, it's ninety. And here in the ninety, 
will be the, the buy opportunities dollar again the gen okay okay what a great uh, presentation Roberto I want to thank okay. you so I want to thank you so much oh, for sorry for my language because I, oh, I, I I you're, can you're, read. You I can read English. I can read English, but it's very difficult for me to, to talk in English. <laughs> well, you know what? I I understood everything you said, and your work is outstanding. And I recommend that people follow you at least at the minimum on Twitter at Roberto okay. underscore Ruarte, and you also have okay. another Twitter handle at Ruarte Reports. And if you want to show your website and how people could get a hold of you, Roberto, go ahead and do that. Show your Thank website. Thank you very much, Val. Thank you for your, your interview. For me, it's a very pleasure. Uh, my son told me, yes, uh, my this is so good for Nigerian, for Thailand people, not for English people. <laughs> yeah, tell your son you did it. In, in Dale Kinker's opinion, your, your English is better than my Spanish. <laughs> okay. okay. Tell you okay. Some that. Then, All right. Uh, when you can go to the, if you can go to Mexico, my home is your home. And uh, in oh, uh, wow. yes, and then yeah. it's a pleasure for us to receive you in any time. Okay. Thanks for All your right. phone. And I'm for I'm I, 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 I Thank you very much for this presentation. All right. okay. You know what? Uh, you are now my trading warrior brother, Roberto Ruarte. Take heed of what Roberto said. You could tell he has a handle on some cycles and some nice. Great to bring. Oh, Ricardo Dinger. Do you know Ricardo Dinger and Valeria Vedneric? Uh, uh, yes, Argentina. he's a friend from Argentina. He's a friend from right. Argentina. Ricardo Dinger is a friend. Ricardo is? Ricardo? Ricardo Dinger. Or yes. Valerie. Oh, yeah. Ricardo Dinger. has helped me out in my communities for many years. So I love Ricardo. Uh, yeah, so, yeah. Ricardo. Uh, in from Argentina, Ricardo. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, you're now you're now another trading warrior brother of mine. I hope pips rain down on you and all your subscribers. And I encourage people to stay in touch with Roberto, who I think has its finger okay. on the pulse of a few waves that could work out in a big way. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Uh, best regard for you and your community. Thank for, uh, for uh, very uh, congratulations for your job. And thank you very much yep. for this interview. Okay. okay. All right, buddy. Okay, everyone, that's it for me, too. I want to thank uh, Blake for his analysis today. I also want to thank Steve and uh, what a great interview with Roberto. So we'll wrap it up tomorrow, TGIF. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. And click on that subscriber button there and see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.